Well, I can already tell the logistics of this is going to be completely fucking off the goddamn wall. Fuck! Hey, y'all, what's up? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. So, unbeknownst to me, as I said last night, completely forgot that Backlash was coming on tonight, so I had to really hustle up. I had to get the recordings ready. I had to get the music ready. By the way, you dig Janet Jackson? I like Janet Jackson, too. That's the way love goes. Like a mouth to the flame. I'm so cringe. But no, hey, check it out. I got this shit up together within an hour. The thumbnail, all this shit within a fucking hour, bro. Only bad thing is I have to go to work at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I have to actually get ready to go to work at 3.30. But the show is obviously still going to be on at 3.30. So this is going to be a challenge. This is the first time this has ever actually happened to me. Usually, like, if I'm actually, you know, recording something, it's like right when I'm about to leave work. Not when I'm about to go into work. Had I known I was going into work, I would have fucking went in a lot earlier. Oh, man, WWE and their shitty fucking bill makes you forget about their shows coming on. All right, let's see what's on the tap for tonight. I feel like I went over this. Did I go off the car last night? No, let's do it again. Some of you guys didn't watch the SmackDown view last night because yeah, fuck you, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Matches. Okay, let's go over it again. Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline, represented by Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga. The Kabuki Warriors, or as I like to call them, the Bukaki Warriors. <laughs> Swing, right? Going up against Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Chewing, chewing, right? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Bailey and Naomi versus... T oh, excuse me. Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton in a triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. Uh, Damian Priest going up against Jay Uso, which I'm actually looking forward to that match. Not because of the match in itself, because I just want to hear the crowd reaction. That crowd was lit as fuck last night for smackdown i'm hoping they're keeping the same energy and if they are yo the reaction to jay uso is going to be off the fucking charts i actually they were actually going eat last night i can only imagine when he actually shows up to the show if that's the same audience that were there last night that's going to be here for tonight or i guess this evening or i guess this afternoon fuck Cody Rose and AJ Styles in the mini event for the Undisputed Championship belt. So they legitimately added nothing. There's no Intercontinental Championship match. There's no United States Championship match. There's no Tag Team Championship match except for the women's Tag Team titles. As a matter of fact, looking at this card, hang on for a second. Huh. Orton, Bloodline, Kabuki Warriors, Bianca Jade, Bailey, Naomi, Tiffany, Cody, AJ. Are these all SmackDown matches? That just dawned on me. I mean, I know the Kabuki Warriors went to Raw, but, like, we're talking about when the match was actually set. Technically speaking, right? The Rossies aren't set till Monday. Or locked, I guess. So, technically, yeah, these are all SmackDown matches. With just one exception being Priest and Jey Uso. Okay, so, for all the people out there saying, Devontae, I don't like it where you say you don't want to see the band split in Mo. Fuck, Devontae, don't you want to see the band split? What, 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 do you, what the fuck do you call this, huh? Huh? What the fuck do you call this? This is a soft brand split as is. This is a brand split in itself. Like, honestly, I would have just, if that was going to be the case, I would have just done brand exclusive straight up and I would have replaced the Damian Priest and Jake. I mean, don't get it twisted. I want to see it. But if you're going to go this far, you might as well just go all the fucking way. I would have replaced that match with probably maybe the tag team championship match that was on last night. I mean, either that or a Logan Paul match, but I'm I'm assuming that maybe Logan Paul couldn't be there because of his contract stipulations. I mean, maybe he was allowed to miss some dates just like Roman Reigns. I don't know. I mean, if Logan is available, then I would have just done Logan Paul versus somebody at France, but that's okay. But with that being said, no more running my mouth. Intro's over with. We need to get the fuck into the show. We need to get the fuck out of the show. I mean, I'm screwed regardless, but again, I am curious as to how I'm going to... um do this um logistically i said logistically like four times already right maybe five six seven i lost count all right no more babbling around i'm rambling let's go backlash 2024 which is technically nxt backlash 2024 main roster style here you see how this card is so okay no more let's go come on holy shit what a great fucking match that was like the match in itself would have already been excellent minus the crowd reactions but god damn bro this crowd is so fucking crazy and the visuals and the presentation and the post-match stuff and the conclusion to the match this match was fucking awesome i fucking love this match holy shit so they first off i will say the the one negative which has nothing to do with the match it's the entrance 
I am so confused. So I did read earlier on, apparently, I, maybe I read it wrong. I don't know, but I could have sworn, but I didn't read the article. Let me just say this. I, I pulled a Brian Zane. I didn't read the article. I just looked at the title. But I did see somewhere that said that I thought Kevin Owens was going to have a special entrance. I could be wrong, but that's why I read. And Kevin Owens came out to the ring, right? And he was stalling for so fucking long. I don't know what the fuck was going on. He came out and then like, bruh, he's like embracing the crowd for like, I shit you not, like two or three straight minutes of just nothingness. He's just there standing around, looking around, staring, hot five an audience. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought maybe something was supposed to happen for real for real with his entrance. And like, I don't know, maybe they didn't maybe it didn't happen maybe it was a botch maybe it didn't i don't know it was just weird but what was awesome was what happened afterwards randy orton came out and in my opinion that is one of the best entrances this year that's like right below the Sami Zayn entrance earlier on raw right earlier this year on raw randy orton came out bro and he the audience just like last night for smackdown were singing his theme song but it was something different about this bro because it's more people obviously i think so i could be wrong they said eleven thousand fans i don't know who's how many fans were on smackdown last night but he came out to the ring and as they're singing his song it's this dope i put it on the community post but it's this dope ass camera shot right when they're like going he's going on the ring ropes right he's doing this whole little voices in my head so you know when he grabs his head and he starts swaying his body left and right like he's hearing voices for real for real like he's schizophrenic or some shit well there's a camera shot where he gets on the turnbuckle he does his little you know legend killer pose then he does the fucking voices in my head pose thing and then the solo kicks in and then it just fades away and it does a large goddamn crowd shot. And the crowd is going bananas while the solo is going. And Orton is just like swaying his body back and forth. Doing, I was like, that is, that is just such a beautiful camera shot. I don't know why. I really, 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 really dug Randy's entrance. Like from the singing and all that stuff. Great fucking entrance. And then the match was about to happen. But then they just started brawling. The bell didn't even ring. And they're like brawling all over the arena. Just like SmackDown last night. Security guards had to come out. Orton and kevin are taking them out left and right before nick aldis came out and he just straight up said you know what fuck it y'all want to do this let's do it the right way then street fight so we got an impromptu street fight and they fought in the audience they fought um uh towards the ringside area kind of reminiscent to rock and roman reigns versus seth and cody they even did the whole little split camera shit it was really cool we eventually got to a point where, like, they brought they they broke a lot of shit. Uh, they broke a bunch of tables. They brought in candlesticks. Uh, they used prime bottles inside the nuts. RKO on top of the announcement table. A backdrop multiple times to both guys on top of the announcement table. They were beating the shit out of each other, right? So then we get to the finish of the match. And by the way, all this shit was awesome because the crowd was just... I just cannot... Oh, wait, look, look, look. Hey, hang on. Kevin Owens is coming back out to the ring. Hang on, hang on. Oh, okay, that's oh that's pretty cool. They should do that more often. So like I thought they were gonna do something else, but no, nah, they were just showing Kevin and uh Randy licking their wounds and walking backstage. But um Kevin Owens, he hit um so like they, they did this spot. This is the uh finale where like uh Kevin Owens he sets up like four chairs, two facing one way and two facing the two chairs that's in front of it and it looked like um they were gonna go for a suplex on it but eventually uh as always you never superplex kevin owens this is on uh tamatanga he lifted them up into like the fisherman for some reason Ugh, michael cole is so cringe he called it a brain buster and uh, no it's a fisherman driver he did it off the middle rope you know how kevin owens does it and he did it through like this multiple scattered up, up fucking chairs right there in the middle of the ring and it looked like he was going to get the victory until someone pulled him out the ring and no it wasn't jacob it was camacho bro i don't know what his name is but i recognize him as fucking camacho he's a dude that used to be with fucking hunico who used to ride on the bicycle so he's back in wwe right now i know that uh, uh they said it was tamatonga's brother i don't know his like real name or his name that is uh, attached to him I know him as the guy who was sidekick with Hunico back in the days. So nice to see him back. Apparently, he's within the bloodline. So he screwed uh, Randy Orton over and he pulled uh, Kevin Owens over and he pulled Kevin Owens off the ring. He picked up the steel steps. He hit him with it. And then he hit Randy Orton with it first. Then he hit Kevin Owens with it, which set up um, Kevin Owens to get hit with uh, Samoan Spike from Solo Sokoa. And they won the match. And again, bruh. 
the audience attached to all look, i can't stress this enough bro the audience was is so fucking good they're so fantastic bro and then like just the match in itself was just just chaotic as fuck it was such a fun opener that's probably in my opinion maybe the best opener of the year you can take your stupid fucking pod and okada matches i'm sorry i don't care we see matches like that all the fucking time to see the story as far as how it's developing with the bloodline and everything that's connected with it and how hot the audience was in front of 11,000 screaming fucking crazy ass French Canadians or whatever French French people whatever the case may be I thought this was absolutely fantastic and like I said it's more forwarding of the bloodline store with a new member so they're gonna hold off on Jacob Fatu so clearly that's gonna be the case right it's gonna be Solo which I presume he's, he's gonna be the new leader of the bloodline then it's gonna be Jacob Fatu who I'm gonna presume is gonna be like the mid carter of the group right he's gonna be the one going for the United States championship most likely while solo is going to go for the world championship and then you have camacho and tamatanga who are going to team up together and they're going to go after the tag team championship belts so this was fantastic again all this and on top of that also a little minor uh, detail i liked how uh michael cole and i know WWE has allowed him to do this more often that's good give more because tamatanga is relatively he's not new to professional wrestling he's not even new to professional wrestling fans but he is new to like the wwe audience today right you do want to give backstory as far as who he is. And it's nice that they're mentioning the, uh, mentioning the New Japan stuff. I mean, granted, I can, you know, do without the fucking mentioning of it. But at the same time, I get it. You're trying to educate the audience on the background of Tamatanga, right? And they're talking about all the stuff with uh, him going up against Evil and Ishii and him being a seven-time uh, and uh, IWGP Tag Team Champion. That's what you want to do. You want to highlight it. You want to highlight that kind of stuff. Just everything about this match was fantastic i can't put it over enough great stuff if you get the opportunity go back and watch it this was a great fucking match from the audience all the way down to the minute details like for an example randy orton hitting solo sokoa with a headbutt and then selling it because you never had but a samoan good shit bro just i can't put this over enough great fucking match i don't know why it looked like naomi was about to turn on bailey right there oh i tried to burp i couldn't though fuck i can't burp ah, ah. All right, there we go. Sorry, had to drink some soda to make myself burp. So this match right here, triple threat match: Bailey, Naomi, Tiffany Stratton. Uh, this is the perfect example of a crowd that is really, really hot, like red hot, like this crowd is. Like if this crowd, like if Dave Meltzer were to put this crowd on a ranking scale, like a star system, this is a five star crowd. This is one of the best fucking crowds I think I've ever seen. Like I, I swear to God, and like. This is gonna go up there, like uh, with uh, Money in the Bank 2011. Honest to God, it's gonna go up there with the Raw after Mania back in 2013. This is like an attitude era crowd with how they're reacting. This is such an amazing fucking crowd. And they're making most, like almost every match on this card is gonna automatically get like a half star boost just because this crowd is just, it makes the environment seem so much better, bro. And this triple threat match, this is a perfect example of, yeah, the crowd made this match because these girls right here, I don't know what the fuck was going on as far as the communication was considered. They were just not clicking. It's not even as if like, like I can't even put my finger on it. It's not even like they were botching. I mean, they were, but it's not the botches that um, caught my attention as much as it was just outright the timing. Like they just had terrible fucking timing. I don't know what the fuck they were on about. Their timing was so fucking... Oh, hang on for a second. What great storytelling, bro. What great storytelling. Jay Uso's getting ready for his match against Damian Breeze. And the rest of the bloodline. Uh, Camacho, Tamatanga, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Solo Sokoa. They all walk right by Jay Uso and eats his ass up. And then Paul Hammond walks in behind him. And he's like... <laughs> he has this look on his face that's like, I am so scared please help me i'm so scared what great storytelling bro that's fantastic that's that's fantastic solo sokoa my god bro talk about i i guarantee you bro that's just what happens when you that's what i mean when i said um uh, you know i was th i was thinking about this before i talk about the triple threat match i was thinking about this when it comes to like say like uh for example a chad gabriel get re a chad gable getting released and for an example um uh a parker bourgeois 
who unfortunately he was released by NXT and then released by AEW. And I remember I made this video a couple of years ago where I was saying that Braun Breaker, Chad Gable, and Parker Bourgeois were gonna be the faces of WWE in the next couple of years, right? Just to see that two of them got released and Braun Breaker is still here. And it just goes to show you the necessity, like how, how, um, what's what I'm looking for? How, hmm, not grateful, but how fortunate, I think is the best word, how fortunate it is for some of these wrestlers who are brought up in families who, even though they don't have a wrestling background per se, as far as like, um, for an example, doing anything collegiate, um, collegiate or, I mean, just having just the athleticism, like a brawn breaker, being on the, being on par really with a Parker Bourgeois and uh, Chad Gable or Gable Stevenson, as far as uh, where he's positioned, what what wonders it does to just grow up in a family look that, that's dominated by professional wrestling look at solo sokoa i don't think i've ever seen a superstar just get it as quick as solo sokoa outside of a kurt angle and a brock lesnar honestly maybe a logan paul but man yeah great great fucking storytelling but this triple threat match really quick though get back on topic uh th this shit was just chaotic as far as like just being a hot fucking mess uh, these girls, again, it's not as if they were botching necessarily, although they were, but it was not botching because like, oh, they didn't know how to do the moves. It was botching because like every fucking spot, especially in the beginning, it, 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 they weren't in the right positions. You know what I mean? Like they weren't in the right positions to complete the move. They were stalling. They were hesitant a bunch of times. It, it was just really, really clunky. It got somewhat better towards the latter portions of the match, more so thanks to thanks to uh, Tiffany Stratton she was good in this match I mean again like it was still clunky but she tried her best to work with uh, Naomi and Bailey which is just weird because Naomi and Bailey are usually on point and I was actually expecting more out of this triple threat match but um Tiffany Stratton she did her best to work with them um nice athleticism from the Cartwell spine busters that are both of them on the announce table on the outside of the ring which is essentially the highlight of the match even this spot right here which could have been good had it just been timed again timing and the coordination to some of these moves with these girls were just all over the fucking place Tiffany Stratton was gonna go for a uh, prettiest moonsault ever on the both of them like she's been doing for the past couple of weeks when laying them out and they both moved out the way and Naomi and Bailey it looked like they were trying to go for a 3D but Naomi looked her up for the flapjack and then Bailey wasn't in it wasn't as if Bailey wasn't in the right position they were just way too close to the turnbuckle so like there was no way for Bailey to fully lay out her body and it just came off looking excuse me really really weird bro it, it was just a weird, it was just weird, and Tiffany Stratton got taken out, and it came down to Naomi and Bailey, and you were thinking to yourself, they were gonna have, like, this big fight, and then, um, I can't explain it, bro, sorry, I had to pause it, because I had to see Jay Uso's entrance, I knew that shit was gonna be lit, god, yeah, yo, come back to France, I don't care what happens, come back to France, bro, break your neck coming back to France, don't, bro, bro, come back to France, man, this shit makes wrestling so much easier to watch, bro, Come back to France, WWE. I'm begging you. They need to give France a WrestleMania. If they're going to do all this, imagine how a WrestleMania is going to turn out. Give France a WrestleMania, bro. This shit is amazing. Look at this fucking crowd, bro. Look at this shit, dude. They're doing the whole yeet dance with Jay Uso and all the lights going up and down, bro. What a fucking fantastic... Uh, man... But real quick, so I keep getting distracted from this triple threat match. Because, again, it wasn't really anything worth talking about. Besides the fact that they were just fucking up a bunch of moves. Naomi and Bailey went at it for, like, not even 30 seconds. I can't even explain what the fuck happened. Bailey's like, you want to go? You want to go? You want to go? And then she won the match with a roll-up. Naomi hit her with a roll-up. And then Bailey countered in the roll-up. And I thought they were going to go back and forth trading roll-ups. No, Bailey just won the match off of the next transition roll. And it looked like the referee botched that too. Like that wasn't supposed to be the finish. This match is just bad. This is just a really, really bad match. And honestly, I don't want to talk about it anymore because Jay Uso and Damian Priest are about to come up. But yeah, this was a complete clusterfuck of a match. I this was bad. This was really, really bad. But with that being said, Jay Uso, Damian Priest, let's get it. All right, so that was a solid match. That was a really, really solid match. Those guys, they went out there. And again, I, I this is gonna be the story of the entire night, the story of the entire show. This French crowd, bro, this French crowd, they I cannot stress enough that they have to return to this crowd. This this they deserve it, bro. They deserve it the way because it's not just like they're just saying random shit. They're actually behind the faces, they hate the hills, and how they actually like bro ugh, I can't explain it, bro. This this is one of the best crowds of all time. 
Honest to God, this is one of the most engaging audiences I think I've ever seen in my life. This French crowd is just fucking amazing. And they haven't lost any energy. They're still pumped up as fuck, bro. And again, this match would have been good on his face already. But then this crowd just tunes it up to great, bro. They just tune it up to great, bro. Like I said, the entrance from Jay Uso was so fucking hyped. How he's coming out and everybody's doing the whole little fucking, you know, the little arm shit. It, it, ugh, man and then before the match even starts he's dictating the crowd by doing the whole little arm motion just to control how the audience is going he it's just fucking amazing and these guys go out there and they have a good match watch well, a very good match actually you know you got a couple of super kicks a couple of chops to the head uh damian priest kicked out of the um uso splash uh jay uso kicking out of the razor's edge uh, a little bit of a story developing also which actually there's a lot of a story developing when you look at the post-match stuff. Uh, JD McDonough got involved in the match, which distracted Jay Uso for a little bit. But in reality, he distracted Damian Priest also, who didn't even know JD McDonough was out like ringside. He told JD McDonough he didn't need his help and to leave, right? And then you, you know they continue for a little bit longer. Then Finn Balor comes out and he distracts um, Damian Priest also and Jay Uso for the most part too. But once again. He sees him, tells him to leave. He doesn't need his help. They go back and forth for a little bit, trading shots. The crowd is getting really, really into the back and forth kicks to the face, chops to the face, throat chops and everything, slaps to the face. And then we get to a point in time when he hits the South of Heaven choke slam, but Jay Uso kicked out of that also. He was attempting to go for um, uh, one more Uso splash before, uh, again, both guys got involved again. No, actually, I, I take that back. I'm sorry. I think he did. I did the second one is when Fan Balor pushed him off the turnbuckle. The third one he actually connected but then jd mcdonough put his foot on the ropes they mean priest that is right which obviously uh distracted jay the referee stopped the count jay uso ended up hitting a suicide dive on jd mcdonough to take him out hit a nasty gnarly looking spear on finn balor on the outside of the ring and then he gets back into the ring looks, looks like he's gonna go for another uh uso splash before uh damian priest uh crushed him on the ropes while he's like sitting there dangling on the middle rope Damian Priest gets on the turnbuckle and he hits him for South of the he South of Heaven choke slam from the middle rope off the turnbuckle onto the mat and he got the victory off of that. So no Jacob Fatu. I was actually thinking to myself they were gonna have Jacob Fatu come out, but I, it may, I mean they don't have to rush this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. I was expecting him to come out, but it's not as if he has to come out. You already gave us one surprise with Camacho. No need to blow your load twice. You know eventually Jacob Fatu is going to come. I just thought he was going to be the one to actually, you know, distract Jey Uso, and he was going to be the one to uh, win the match for him. Wasn't the case. And, you, again, you don't need that to be the case. But what is developing out of this is after the match, you had Finn Balor and JD McDonough go over there to attack Jey Uso. Damian Priest comes. He breaks them up. He tells him to stand down. Finn Balor goes to attack Jey Uso some more. And then, like, Damian Priest jacks him up from the jaw. And then JD McDonough goes over. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, that's it. That's enough. He's done. There's nothing else to do. And then, like, he tells JD McDonough and Finn Balor to stand on opposite sides of the ring from him to celebrate with him, which is really, really weird. Can I just say this also? I mean, don't get it twisted. Uh, Damian Priest is a big man, right? So I would think theoretically he should look like the dominant one. He should be the leader of the Judgment Day with Rhea Ripley not being around, right? But god damn it does feel kind of weird like yes optically i can see what they're going with this but is it just weird is it just me like finn balor no matter how small he is how much you like how much you hate him he is a former wwe champion right and it does feel kind of weird that you would have a guy who's a former wwe champion in that kind of position to look like that much of a bitch like you've been to the top bro like I, I and then he went to nxt and he was pretty much the guy who carried that entire show from like 20 like 2020 to 2021 or whatever the case may be like he has been shown to be a proven leader and it's just really really weird to see Vin, finn balor play a role like this to a damian priest i mean again i get it you look at it you will say to yourself yeah yeah it makes sense damian priest should be the leader of the group but knowing finn balor's credentials it just feels kind of weird you know like he's way more um successful than a damian priest so it's just weird to see him take a back seat to damian priest i guess is what i'm trying to say but you know it looks like from the outside looking in that damian priest is most likely gonna turn face uh are they gonna find a new leader for the judgment day 
Is it going to be, I mean, Rhea Ripley's essentially, she's gone right now, so it's not going to be her. Dominant Mysterio is out, so I'm very curious as to what's going to happen with that. So keep your eye out on that, but for sure, Damian Priest is damn sure turning face from what it looks like. I'm just curious as to what direction they're going to go into going for. Is this going to be the end of the Judgment Day in general? Because if this is the end of the Judgment Day, J.D. McDonough is fucking screwed. Or is it going to be the fact that they're going to find a new leader just like they did Edge? Which would be very ironic. And, you know, again, full circle and great storytelling if they were to do that. Because they could just be like, whoa, Damien, isn't that what you did to Edge also? So, I'm, I'm here for it. I want to see more of what's going to happen with the Judgment Day. And, uh, yeah, great match. And, once again, this crowd is just fucking fantastic. Can't put them over enough. Okay, I'm not going to say that I was expecting this match to be bad i was expecting it to be good this was way better than it had any right to be this was a fantastic tag team match this has got to be jay cargill's best match right like period whether you're talking about aew whether you're talking about here this is jay cargill's best match what the hell that finish was awesome as fuck very simplistic but at the very same time very complicated i can't really explain it bro i gotta get ready to go to work but man real quick because i still gotta find a way to fucking look at the main event while at the same time giving my focus senses on the main event but really quick though bro this match right here so they're going back and forth they're doing their thing the spots bro, I, I can't i really can't get over that finish from jay cargo that was such a dope ass finish they were actually working over the girls pretty well for the most part, right? Uh, Jake, um, uh, Asuka, and uh, Kyrie Sane, they got way more offense than I thought they were going to get. And Dakota Kai wasn't there also, which was kind of weird. I like the spot where uh, they're like going back and forth and Jade Cargill is taking the kicks and the punches to the face over and over and over and over again between both girls. I like that. There was one nasty spot where uh, Kyrie Sane caught Bianca Belair on the outside of the ring with a crossbody, which looked like the knee caught like Bianca Belair right in the fucking eye. If she were to have a black eye, I would not be surprised from that like Kyrie caught her ass flesh in the like right in the eye bro and they start going back and forth for a little bit longer this match went on for quite a long time too like if I had to guess this match went well over 15 minutes again I wasn't expecting them to go this long and I wasn't expecting them to be killing it this fucking hard so let me just jump directly to the finish because for the most part like I said it wasn't anything that was downright noticeable they were just really really clean with the spots that they were doing and the hot tags and the working over Bianca Belair before she got the tag in the Jade Cargill before she cleaned house I will say there was one little rough spot and you can see like you can say it's a rough spot in the sense that like um it broke the momentum a little tiny bit but you know it's great officiating from WWE it had it been fucking um had it been AEW, they would have just let the match continue. But, you know, they're trying to make their shit look a little bit more legitimate and give the referee a little bit more leniency, right? And the referee, it was a spot where Kyrie saying, I guess she was going for a pinfall, but the referee was tapping her and saying, hey, you're not the legal woman. It's Asuka. It's Asuka, which kind of broke the whole momentum for what they were picking up from. And it kind of messed the girls up a little tiny bit as far as communication because it's like, I guess they were going to follow, follow into another spot before that happened. But like I said, good officiating. That's on the girls or any of the workers if, you know, you can't get your spots correctly. Don't look at the referee as if he fucked up. That's on you. Get back on the game. Get back on the ball, which the girls did. And we got this killer ass fucking finish, bro. So they're ping ponging Jay Cargill again, right? And it gets to a point where like Jay Cargill, <laughs> Jay Cargill has enough, and she just fucking super kick. No, not even, it's like a thrust kick, Goldberg style, to Oscar right in the fucking head. And then Kyrie's saying it looks like she's going for a cold breaker off the turnbuckle, but I really can't tell. Jay Cargill caught her by the legs. No, she caught her in the powerbomb position. Threw her up in the air into an electric chair drop position. Dropped her out of the electric chair drop position into a double chicken wing. And then, like, hit her with the jaded or the glam slam, however you like to refer to it. And then Bianca Belair picks up Asuka and then hits her KOD on top of a fucking Kyrie Sane who was just hit with that awesome-ass finish from Jay Cargill. And they ended up winning the Tag Team Championship belts. Again, it's not as if we didn't know this was going to be the case. We all knew that Jay Cargill and Bianca was going to win the match. I just didn't think that they were going to get this much competition from Kyrie and Asuka, you know. But uh, great shit. Solid, solid, solid. 
solid fucking match. Way better than the earlier women's match. And again, I thought it was going to be the reverse. I thought the girls in the triple threat match had a point to prove and they were going to kill it. And the tag team match was going to be a lot shorter, like three or four minutes. Get in and get the fuck out. Give them the tag team championship belts. Nah, match went for well over 15 minutes. Back and forth match with a great fucking finish. Very NXT-esque as far as how I would probably paint this match out. It reminded me of like a regular NXT match. Regular, whether you're talking about TakeOver or, ta or like a main event TV show TV match for a fuck TV title main event match. God damn, easy for me to say. Good shit from both teams. Love this match. Great shit and great show overall. And it helped out a lot because the crowd, again, as usual throughout this show, really, really killed it as far as their engagement with it. Awesome shit. Awesome show. And now we have the main event, and I have to figure out the logistics as far as how I'm going to pull this off. So let me get to that, and I'll get back to you after this. Let's go. And folks, that's how you do a pay-per-view. That's how you do a special event. That's how you do a PLE. That's how you do a pay whatever fucking verbiage title you want to give it. That's how you do a fucking main event. You know, the only thing that hurts this main event for me is the legitimate build of the actual match in itself. Had this match had legitimate build to it, I would arguably say that this is the best match of the year. Um, Cody and AJ has such a traditional match in between the crowd and the hype for it, the actual storytelling elements between it. The fact that you still got the pop and the pump and circumstances without going out of your way to sacrifice anything in regards to the actual storytelling elements that they were providing in the match in itself. You get matches like this once in a while, you know, once in a blue moon, you get matches this complete. Like I said, give credit where credit is due. You can go back to Danielson and Will Ospreay, right? Which also had a terrible backstory to it. But they. Hmm. They didn't have a crowd like this. And I just, I can't say it enough and I can't put it across enough. I don't think anyone really understands when I talk about the significance of how important a crowd is. This is one of the best crowds in WWE history, bar none. Nothing comes close and they need to go back to France because these are the kind of matches. Imagine, imagine if this show had even one tenth of the build of say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a traditional, let's just say hypothetically, right? I'm just throwing out the pay-per-view Although it's considered one of the greatest of all time as is, it didn't have a crowd, although a great crowd nonetheless. The crowd wasn't better than this crowd tonight, right? Let's say SummerSlam 2002, right? One of the best pay-per-view cards in the history of professional wrestling, right? And even though the crowd was good, it wasn't the same. It wasn't on point like this right here. Hypothetically speaking, let's say SummerSlam 2002 with Shawn Michaels and Triple H, Rock and Brock Lesnar. Imagine if they had this crowd right here. That show will be considered the best pay-per-view in the history of professional wrestling. That's how great this crowd is. The I just wish. I wonder if Triple H knew how hot the crowd was going to be. That if he would have took more time to like put a little bit more creative behind most of the matches tonight. Because I can't stress it enough. The only bad thing about this. And you guys agree because most of you were saying that. Oh man, I didn't even know Backlash was coming on tonight. That's the only bad thing about this show and about the matches in general, in particular, the main event. It lacked a lot of heat. They made up for it with the shit that they did tonight. They made up for it for the traditional storytelling. The thing is, I missed like maybe one because I'm driving. I actually had to pull over to the to a gas station. I'm actually in my work clothes right now. I'm going to be late for work and it's worth it because I have to talk about this. Bruh, correct me if I'm wrong. I made it to like the latter portions after the power bomb through the announcement table from um, Cody to AJ. I didn't see Cody one time kick out of a phenomenal forearm. I didn't see AJ one time kick out of a um, out of a crossroads. They all were just hitting their signature moves, hoping that those would be the synon that would give them the actual win. Them attempting to go for their finishes but getting it reversed. I can't put it over enough how refreshing of a match this is, bruh. And just leading directly into the finish with the top springboard Cody Cutter right into a crossroads to get the pinfall win. And the crowd, so fucking, they were shaking during AJ's entrance. The camera was shaking. The intensity behind this audience holds no bounds, bruh. And like I said, everything that you see in this match right here. I think this is what professional wrestling is all about. And to be quite frank, I really have to think about it. 
Because on one hand, I know most people, I might even want to put a poll out for that. What was the better match? Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes or Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles? I think that's a legitimate question. I think now, this this is just my opinion. I know most people may have a difference in opinion because you may focus on different elements and criteria in regards to your match types. I like Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. No, scratch that. I love that match. And already, personally speaking, I'm going to knock it down a notch. I'm going to put Cody and AJ right in front of it because of the engagement from the audience on top of the match, in my opinion, being just as good as what they did. And then it comes into question, which one was the best main event? You know, when it's all said and done, say what you will about Cody Rose, have your opinion about the guy. I know I have my opinion about him as far as character work and everything. As far as the end ring work is considered, he's got to get the Luthez Award this year, right? Right, or is Dave Meltzer going to be so fucking biased and really try to put across Will Ospreay? But of course, he's going to be his voters in the end of the day, and they think just like him. But I would think a non-biased person will look at the work that Cody Rose is doing this year and look at what he's actually building up. Because it's not like he's being carried by most of these talents. No, he's pulling in the work, doing just as much work. And if anything, in the case of a Roman Reigns match, he was the one that was pulling the um, he was the one that was actually carrying the match. Now again, it would benefit them to actually build some more creative within their matches so we can get the most out of this because like i said the only thing bad about this show overall was just the god i wish it would have had more structure in regards to going into and i gotta think i gotta ask it one more time would triple h had he known how hot the crowd was going to be had he known he was dealing with one of the best crowds in the history of professional wrestling to be quite frank given how engaged they were they just were energized throughout the entire show every superstar was show love every single wrestler on this car hell even samantha irving because they were they were complimenting her by repeating what she was saying whenever they came out every single person was loved if they do not come back to france they're doing everybody in the wrestling business as far as the wrestlers who are currently within their company as far as the wrestlers and different companies who can dream to get those kind of reactions and the fans as far as the enjoyability in regards to the product in itself you're doing every single person a disservice by not showing by not bringing a show back to france to be quite frank i wish i know the logistics is going to be kind of hard but damn it all i want them to have a wrestlemania so badly in france they deserve it that fucking crowd deserved a wrestlemania if not a wrestlemania for sure a summer summer or Royal Rumble or maybe even something a little bit right below it like a Survivor Series or a Money in the Bank give them a hot show and the next time you come to France come correct bruh this main event is one of the best main events of the entire year if not the best main event of the entire year these guys going out there and they're busting their ass and the crowd is hot for it and everything like that Imagine, just imagine if you would have gave them a teensy weensy bit of backstory, a teensy weensy bit of bill compared to the bullshit that you gave, gave us for the past two weeks. This would have been guaranteed in the staples of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. And don't get it twisted. If I had a list as far as like a decade list, this is for sure going at least personally for me in my top 20 best matches of the decade list easily, maybe even top 10. If not a top 10, for sure an honorable mention. That's how good this match was. And just overall, this show was just just a pleasure. This show was a pleasure. Quite frankly, just the audience alone was a pleasure. But the show in itself, people came and they delivered. There was only one really bad match, in my opinion. That was a triple threat women's match. Every other match was fucking crazy. And the main event was on fire and epic. Everybody pulled their weight behind this show i can't stress it enough what an enjoyable pleasurable show to watch and it's looking like backlash is starting to become that staple last year backlash was an incredible show too i think i put this show right here just a teensy weensy bit over that show because of the main event itself but man but man backlash is becoming that staple for the show it's, it's now become the new extreme rules for the show you know you can watch that you know for a fact there's a good shot that it's going to deliver this show easily gets to 8.5 easily 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 get to 8.5 and it's the best show of the year i think i think we can all agree right this is the best show of the year so far if for nothing else just even the crowd participation but god damn it all these guys went out there and they fucking killed it they fucking delivered bro this is nxt levels of enjoyable uh do yourselves a favor and go back and re-watch this show go back and re-watch the main event re-watch the opener match re-watch the tag team match for the women i will say jay uso and damian priest was a little bit less satisfying but it was still a solid match. The only match I recommend not going out of your way to go watch is the Triple Threat Women's match. You don't have to watch that. But outside of that match, these four matches, 
go back and watch this. This actually felt like a really, really strong. This felt like an NXT show on steroids is what it felt like. Congratulations to everybody a part of this show. You guys fucking went out there and you fucking delivered. Good shit. But next time you come to France, come correct, bruh. It's like this is the equivalent of a bad bitch and you come in and your dick soft as fuck. Nah, the next time you come to France, come correct. Because you know they gonna bring the smoke. So you better bring the fire. Good ass show. Tops, props, whatever you want to say to everybody involved as far as the creation of the show. Now I got to get my ass back on the road. <sighs> Ugh, nothing like a good rest in the show to get you ready for work. Am I right? As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces, P. Eyes. <laughs>